Hi, I'm Matthew. And I'm Peyton, and we're testing VR content for education. We've seen like, all sorts of stuff like games and applications for education that you can use for graphing and like viewing objects in a 3D space. There's also a lot of demos of different techniques with VR, such as being able to create maps of 3D models using the images, but there's also more concrete practical tools. Um, one example would be Short Circuit VR, which is basically a lab space where you can play with electronic circuits in VR, and it takes away the need to have those resources on hand. So one of the big things that we've seen is VR replacing resources that classrooms would otherwise need to acquire or buy. I think there tends to be a divide in education between trying to completely gamify things and make them very fun, and also really, really dry applications of VR. The problem that a lot of um, VR applications have is like locomotion, like getting around a 3D space mm -hmm. that's like larger than your play area. Um, a lot of applications have trouble with that. I think. Yeah, in general, comfort settings too, like not changing the view setting, or if you move in 3D space, your body and your eyes are seeing totally different things. Um, and it causes this really big mismatch. So motion sickness is a very real thing in VR. I think like just not being focused on what the age group is. Sometimes there's like very general applications or sometimes it's just difficult to find things that are geared towards education. A lot of things are more built towards entertainment. There's also a lot of content on in VR that just isn't appropriate for classrooms either. And so sometimes it's difficult to find content or material that could be potentially useful. I think the fa my favorite thing that I've seen so far is MUX, M-U-X, and basically what it is is like you start with like a generator and it gives off a frequency and you can like hook it up to different objects that are like manipulate the frequency and then you can hook that up to a speaker which will play a sound and there's like a whole bunch of different things you can do like press buttons and like send the frequency through like a, a pulser or something and like you can do a whole bunch of stuff like make your own instruments and that was pretty awesome. Hollow Labs Champions, amazing. Like it looks amazing. It's a game show setting. So each and every step is sort of gamified. You get rewards just for like pouring liquids in specific amounts. And it teaches kids lab skills, how to measure precisely, how to like take masses and volumes. And it's really exciting and really fun. Another recommendation would be Overview, a walk through the universe. A lot of VR content tries to focus around astronomy, but I, I feel like this one does it the best. They have just these huge models of all of the dif different planets in the solar system. They have really good narration, um, and it doesn't try to be a realistic like uh, like rocket simulator. It doesn't try to like focus in on like too much interaction, but instead it's like look at how huge and beautiful and bright our universe is. Um, and it's just really inspirational. So Magic Hour is like a photography simulator. It's pretty cartoony, like the camera is just like a big box in front of you, but um, you can like change like the, change out the lens and like edit a bunch of different settings on the camera. And you can take pretty realistic photos in like a sort of cartoony environment. And it isn't early access right now, so I think they are going to add more environments, which will be great. But already it's super awesome. I think at first it was easy to sort of be like, oh, I'm just like playing games and writing reviews for them. But then also realizing that Foundry 10 and educators in general really do need resources to know what's useful for classrooms. We currently have a list of different games and other tools, software that's available online, either through Steam Store or Oculus or other resources. Um, and that's currently on the Foundry 10 website under VR for educators. I think the biggest thing is just bridging the gap between textbook learning and being able to see and visualize it. Uh, I think a lot of these VR experiences are best started with a discussion in the classroom or with content in class and then transferred to VR so students can see what they've been learning about and really reinforce that learning. The other thing is assisting with resources. With VR, you can replace a lot of traditional physical kits, resources. Uh, I keep using the word resources. I'm going to restart that sentence. The other thing VR can really help with is accessibility in classrooms. Rather than needing expensive kits or lab equipment, 
you can replace that with VR experiences. And that's something that's really v v valuable, especially in classrooms that might not have access to those or can't afford to spend money on that equipment instead. I found that some educational VR experiences um, try to completely replace a classroom experience, which I found doesn't work very well. There's sort of a balance that needs to be struck between relying on classroom learning and VR. I think one thing that VR experiences could start doing is creating lesson plans around their experience in order to bridge the gap between classroom and VR. We hope this was helpful for you guys. We will continue to update the information on the Foundry 10 website and add more resources as time goes on. But we're also planning on making a blog pretty soon, which will hopefully be like a much more um, organized way to present the information. Yeah, and also including highlights, experiences we really liked, and even highlighting needs that we see in VR for education. Thank you for listening.